Hi, it's Joy, and today I'm going to be watching Stargirl Season 1, Episode 4, Wildcat, which I'm guessing means that either Courtney's going to be working on recruiting a new Wildcat, or maybe we're going to get some more information about the old Wildcat, but I am very excited to see what's going next. I love that Courtney is so determined to be making a new superhero team. I am very excited. And one last thing before I start watching, if you would like to watch this reaction unedited, please do go and check out on my Patreon. Let's go! Hello, sweetheart. Are we going to see what happened, why they're all bullying her? Ooh. So she was dating the horrible bully dude. So she was relatively confident or popular or... No. Don't do it. The thing is when you trust someone you do it. You're better than all of them. He's sharing them around. Oh sweetie. So was he actually somewhat was he part of it? I mean, now he bullies her about it, so he's a jerk, but... I need that girl to get her comeuppance. <laughs> I wouldn't risk it. Oh no, the pen. No, if you've cooked him eggs, he will eat eggs. Friend to dinner too. That's such an awkward thing to say because how do you know whether or not she has friends? Thank you very much. He wasn't my friend, Pat. He never got the chance to be. No. We should be out there recruiting new JSA members. Like now. You can't drag anyone. But you do have to go to school, sweetheart. There are other villains in Blue Valley. Of course there are. Oh. Sorry. Ow. So does this boy have any redeeming qualities? What did she just say? Nothing. Henry. Look, I gotta go. She said, ow. I've seen enough of you. Got it? Everyone. Why would you date her? So stay away from him by leaving me alone. That's all I want from everyone. Oh, sweetheart, Courtney would be a good friend. Because she wouldn't desert you if someone sent around pictures that you gave in confidence. He probably shouldn't drive a car that has the exact same colour scheme and design as his robot. Because it would be very obvious to tell who Stripe he is. Stripe, sorry. Does he, is that a customer? Oh, it's her. I woke up in that house all alone and it was just so oh, empty. And it's so her. And I just, I, thank you, Pat. He actually has custom. I am shocked. <laughs> but now I've seen the what the hell is happening? And I'll never betray you. <laughs> what is happening? Not like the, I've been working on my daughter. Yes. Oh, goodness. Who's his daughter? Generations, ultimate sacrifice will protect the next. Oh God! I fail you. I'm glad he's dead. What is up with his eyes? I mean, he's like a snake man, I guess. Yeah, but body. what the fuck? No. Yes. <laughs> Your help. What? <laughs> There's something going on. Oh, here. sweetheart, you can't just randomly go up to random kids and recruit them. Get to know them first. Yeah do with you with anyone in the school and there's nothing you can say to change that she wasn't here when that happened you don't know how she would have acted oh this family is no longer as happy as it was she didn't do anything wrong she did not do anything wrong the people that shared it did something wrong you grounded yolanda for how long exactly she did nothing wrong I say so Double standards. Like, yeah, okay, what you need to do is sit down with her and have a talk about what happened. But she did nothing wrong and it's making my blood boil. I blew up Henry's car. <laughs> never should have sent him those. He never should have shared them. Precisely. You did nothing wrong. You were in a relationship. And even if you weren't, you cared about him and you trusted him. They don't bring me to church. Your parents are wrong here too, okay? They're overreacting. Oh, changed. You did nothing wrong. They act you want to see how I blew up his car? <laughs> I really do want her to be Yolanda's friend. And then the other girl that was at their table. Don't trust this town. Okay? Oh, yeah, she knows more than you think. Why? This is what blew up Henry's car. Yeah, this is also what blew up. <laughs> I'm a superhero. <laughs> She's like, of course, the only person that would want to befriend me is a crazy person. Let me just show you. <laughs> Yolanda is definitely reconsidering this. <laughs> What on earth is Pat gonna make of this? That suit while you're what, Miss America? Stargirl. 
She tailored hers. You can tailor her that. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, that is cool. Okay. I bet she's not a fan of this. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Oh gosh. Checking Wikipedia? <laughs> Courtney is such a teenager. <laughs> Generation Z becoming a superhero. <laughs> oh my god. No more Pop Tarts for breakfast. <laughs> oh, the staff loves it. I love it too. Okay, I'm here for this. Because we know Yolanda's in athletic. She boxes. So she's again someone that would be suitable. <laughs> the staff is in love. Afraid to listen to myself, to be me. You don't have to anymore. I'm not gonna do it anymore. Oh, I love Amanda. I'm ready. I'm here for this friendship. It's okay. It is okay. It's a bloody high building. You could maybe start a bit lower. This brat. I'm sorry. He's a brat. Dinner time or oh, pop tarts? Dad? <laughs> He's gonna know exactly what caused that. The one where his dad is one of them. What? He's called <laughs> Brainwave. He's a super villain. Actually, that makes sense. Yep. Hmm. Okay, who else? I don't know. Henry he did seem, I mean, he was still a dick because he was showing his friends. I mean, but he did seem vaguely conflicted. Like, he wasn't happy when the picture got sent around. Like, he maybe did, didn't. He wanted to show it to his buddies, but not everyone. Yes. But I also don't like him, so. <laughs> oh, I'm really, really glad that they're becoming friends. I need this to become like a core of the show. <laughs> God, you would be the most frustrating friend, but also the most motivating, because you would genuinely be believing in you. I do enjoy the fact that they are going about all of this like teenagers. Someone is going to notice the fact that there are claw marks all over the building. Are you? Hey, Beth. Oh, Beth, that's her name. Same old, same old. <laughs> Children, be careful, please. You're not trained. Hold on. The staff isn't happy. Yeah, the staff is sensible. A week. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like a week? <laughs> exactly. And how <laughs> I mean she's causing a distraction, that's for sure. Robert. <laughs> Poor Robert. <laughs> you should spend time with friends. You, but you You know currently she doesn't have any friends, so don't make her feel bad about that. Oh. Oh my god. Oh goodness. You wanna just leave, okay? Sweetheart, go to the window. You do not want to murder him. I I get the impulse. Are you gonna make a noise? Oh my god. Okay, good, she's quick. I guess the suit helps. Where are you? <laughs> I love it. Is this magic music? Courtney duck down a bit, okay? Does one of the Injustice Society have music powers? So does that mean she's a villain too? With a violin? Is that even a thing? <laughs> they are so clueless, I love it. Time to leave now, children, okay? Oh wow. She's watching them. Yolanda? Oh god, she heard that. What? You need to use your names. I do want her to become part of the team, or at least a friend. Oh, sweetie. Yes, what? you are. But the truth is, I need to get my own life back before I put on a costume and be someone else. That's okay. There's time. We're not. I mean, Courtney's in a rush. The rest of us aren't. <laughs> but take all this on right now. You can still be friends, okay? Have someone to hang with and be your friend. And hey, everyone. Oh, just coming in the front door. She's gonna assert herself. You go, girl. Where were you, Yolanda? Why do you always have to yell at her? Quiet. Thank you, little brother. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. 
brought shame to our family. Only because they're outdated idiots. And I'm not going to apologize anymore. Good. I stand for this. Girl should not be made to feel this bad for doing something like that. I've not been acting like it other than your brother. So much. I can be the Yolanda Montez I used to be. Be family or be dicks and you don't deserve her. You're already even acting like you don't deserve her. Bitch. Be the you used to be. Oh, you don't deserve, you deserve so much better. No. Oh, sweetheart. Do you know what you're doing? Parent. You're making it so that as soon as she's 18 and leaves, she will literally never come back. And if that's what you'd like, then fuck off. Good, I'm with you, boy. Oh, Yolanda, I'm so sorry your family is so terrible. That was so brave, okay? You was so brave. <laughs> Courtney does not take no for an answer. Cause can you believe that family? They were all like over the top, like obnoxiously, like proud of her when she was running for student council president or whatever. Then she makes one mistake that technically she did nothing wrong because it's 2020 and if you want to send a picture of yourself to your boyfriend, I probably wouldn't say do that at high school. But you know what? If you want to do that, that's your choice and it's your body and it's your right. And her family can come back into the 21st century. It's 2020 and you deserve better than them. You have a little brother that loves you. Remember that your little brother loves you. She could jump out of buildings. Yay. Best friends. And then Beth will join in. <laughs> Pat is going to have a migraine very shortly. A brain aneurysm. What's he going to find? Okay. Is that her cat? That's her car. All wrecked and... All the stuff that she had of her son. So something has she been taken? Ultimate punishment if you displease the injustice society or did she have a car accident? What happened? That's something for him to invest. I mean, I would be like, hey honey, I know you've got your dream job, but can you please move out of Blue Valley because everyone's going to die. <laughs> okay, so I really, really enjoyed that episode. I really enjoyed, um, finally, Courtney managing to befriend Yolanda. She's been trying, sorry, Yolanda is how they pronounce it, I think. Um, she's been trying to do that all season because... A, she doesn't have any friends, but B, because she could see that Yolanda was being bullied and had no friends because she was being bullied. And, you know, at the end of the day, what she did was like, I'm sorry, it makes me so angry. Anything like that, when people share personal pictures and then they get sent round. I mean, it's kind of like nowadays. I think even if I was deeply in love with someone and they asked me to send them a personal picture, I would say no, just because there is a chance that somehow it would get out, you know? But if you want to take a picture of yourself, that's your right, it's your body. There's nothing shameful about that. If you have the confidence to think, yeah, I look good and to take a picture of yourself, you know, good for you. You should be able to do it. And if you're a child with potentially, I guess, her first boyfriend, or at least what she thought was first love, and, you know, you're stupid and you trust him and you do that, it's not your fault. And so her family's attitude, genuinely, I am so angry. Like, I want to go and adopt her now and be like, I will be your mother. <laughs> I'm probably only, like, ten years older than you, but I will be your mother now. I will treat, I will raise you, I will love you. And I'm so glad that her little brother you know, he could so easily be like, oh, it's gross and people at school bully me about it or, you know, and I laugh about it all the time. And instead, he's just on her side. He loves her. He has been like, stop yelling at her, stop treating her like this. He left when they were horrible to her. But I'm so sad for her that she has to go through this. You know, that she was really brave and she came back from that night and she finally stood up to them and they were still despicable people living in the Victorian age like I'm sorry your daughter like she said she made a mistake I mean I hated that it was even having to be that apologetic about it she brought shame on the family actually no Henry brought shame on the family because not only did he ask a girl to send a picture he then shared it so ugh, it just makes my blood boil but I'm so glad that she has Courtney Courtney who a is like I do know what happened you know she doesn't have to worry that Courtney's gonna find out what happened and then distance herself instead Courtney has been standing up to the bullies every second Courtney has admitted that like I need a friend and I need someone to help me do this with and you know yeah Courtney's starting out but they can start out together and they can help each other train and you know I don't have any problem with the two of them becoming CPOs and training because I think kids are going to do that um if they get the opportunity <laughs> it's more if Pat is like totally cool with it that's when I'm like bad parenting Mike is already a demon child literally demon child he'll be a member of the Injustice League by the end of the season at this rate because the toaster got broken um <laughs> but I mean Pat surely will see the toaster and think that that's claw marks um Shall I go and check if Wildcat stuff's still there? You know, eventually he's going to find out and I'm not entirely sure how pleased he's going to be when she's like, oh yeah, you know that thing I said? Some girl that I literally befriended yesterday, she's not Wildcat. Um, but I think, you know, Courtney has done it 
given that she is a child, very sensibly, and that, you know, she's looked at the yearbook, she has seen that from what she could tell, Yolanda was a good person, because, you know, anyone being bullied by the bitches is going to be a good person, probably, um, and that she has boxing training, and I think that was really important. I think it's going to be really good for her to have Yolanda to have a friend, to have someone that doesn't feel ashamed to be her friend, doesn't feel like it's going to tarnish her somehow. Um, and I just, I'm really glad for her. That, I mean, this character, that you know, she's been someone that I've been feeling for, I mean, I've been waiting for this episode, waiting to get her and Courtney to actually become friends, and I'm so glad it finally happened, and I think she'll make a really good Wildcat. Then we saw Beth, saw them, or at least she saw Wildcat doing its thing, she saw Star Girl, and she saw the girl with blonde hair exactly like Courtney's, saying, good job, Yolanda, like, you need to call each other by your names when you're out in public, okay, Wildcat. But so she now knows that Yolanda climbs buildings at night. Now, they sit at lunch together, still, I assume, her parents are being really horrible to her about not having any friends. I mean, yeah, I can understand that if you're a parent and your child is at school and is like 16 and doesn't have any friends, you would be worried about them because everyone wants the people they love to have friends, to feel wanted, to feel part of a group. But if Beth is quite okay with it, if Beth is saying, well, you know what, yeah, I don't need friends right now, I've got my parents and we get on, then support that or help her find ways to find friends. If maybe everyone at her school sucks, help her find other groups, other ways to find friends, you know, or just talk to her about how, like, oh, when you go away to college, that's going to be great for you because you'll make friends, you know, you don't have to find friends for life at high school you can do, most people do, I guess, but if you don't, that's totally fine. I mean, I do think that Beth will become friends with Courtney just because they sit at the table together and Courtney is a nice person. I think Beth maybe needs to stop being... See, I can understand in a way her mum having a talk with her about how, you know, it's so great that you want to be friends with us, it's so great that you're happy being with us, but don't let that close you off to other opportunities, don't let that make it so that you don't try to make friends with new people that join the school or whatever, you know, that's the kind of conversation you need to have, not just, no more, stop. Like, don't make her feel bad for not having friends. Just give her that calm, quiet talk about how it's okay. So I think that's going to be interesting if she's going to talk to Yolanda about it or she's just going to try and follow them. Is she going to figure out about Courtney? And I'm very intrigued. I don't know what the other superheroes do that she... I mean, what the, we haven't seen that she's got any particular athletic ability. Like, you know, if one of my best friends became a superhero, I am 0% athletic. So unless I got a suit that did everything for me and I just had to exist in it, that would be fine. But other than that, I would suck. I could maybe, maybe pull off helping coordinate as a man in the chair, but you know. Um, I'm very intrigued to see what Beth, I feel like Beth will probably join them. So it's interesting to figure out what the other superheroes have, what powers they might have, how she could be involved, but I'm intrigued about that. Then we have Henry. Now, I don't like Henry because no matter what, he has been bullying Yolanda this whole time. But I think there were clear instances that he felt bad about what happened. Now, that doesn't excuse him, um, because he did seem to be showing it to his friends. So, you know, he's in no way, I'm not in any way saying that I, bl I think he's blameless in the situation, but it was the bitchy mean girl, whose name I don't know, it was called the bitch. It was the bitch that shared it, and he didn't seem like, ha, did it? Like, you know, he seemed a bit devastated when it happened. Now, obviously, you do not get that picture from your girlfriend and then show it to all your mates. That is despicable. But he didn't seem to want it sent around. But then the fact is that now he takes part in bullying her about it. When he, Now, is that just, is Henry just someone that sucked into the peer pressure of it all? Sucked into his father's toxicness, because his father was very toxic with him in the, when his father was awake and not in a coma. Um, and is he someone that just goes along with the bullying because that's how you don't get bullied yourself. That's how you can, you know stay on top of the pyramid as if you become a bully. I mean, that is something that from my from watching TV shows at least, it does seem like the American high school system, bullying is just an expected part of it. Like, you know, you have your jocks and your cheerleaders and your top people and they're the most popular kids in school and that they actively work to make life hell for people that are not cool. Like, bullying like that doesn't exist in the UK, at least not at the school I went to, maybe it did um, in other schools. Yeah, you had the bitchy people that thought they were the popular crowd, that the rest of us were like, sucks to be you because you hate each other. Um, and you had, obviously, there were there are, there is bullying in the UK because kids are horrible to each other, but it's not in the same kind of way as in the, UK, in the US. So I could see Henry just doing that. But I'm intrigued about Henry because I feel like he's either going to join the Injustice Society or maybe um, and might become a new brainwave. But I could see him, if deep down he does have a goodness in him, it would be an interesting plotline if one of their kids were to become, got went from being a horrible bully to maybe apologising for his actions and working to redeem himself. But I don't necessarily, I think I'm probably reaching too much into that. I think if any of them are likely to become good guys, it's 
Icicle's son, whose name I don't remember because he wasn't in this episode. Um, and there's still the mystery of the weird loner boy and Icicle's son, and I think they are different people. Um, but I really enjoyed that. Now, Pat needs to really just take Courtney, sit her down and talk about this. He needs to just not every now and then give a half-hearted... He needs to really sit down and say, look, this is too dangerous. You are 16. Your priority should be school right now. Yes, okay. If there is a big moment and a big fight and we're the only people that can stop the injustice society, it will be us. And maybe we could look into recruiting. But for now, we need to just do fact gathering, information gathering, figure things out. Like, Pat is quite an ineffectual parent. I really like him and I really want to be, like, moved by his relationship with Courtney as it develops. But he's just a really terrible father. Like, Mike is a brat. And they just indulge him in being a brat. You know, it's one thing if he goes on about, is there Pop-Tarts? And then you say, oh, eggs are fine. And then he keeps asking for Pop-Tarts. You could verbally say to him, all right, this just, okay, for today, you don't need to have the eggs, you can have Pop-Tarts. But Mike just does what he wants. He doesn't wait for the parental approval. He's just going to turn, he's quite, he's a young teen at the moment, I or preteen, I don't know how old Mike is. He's a child at the moment, but when he becomes a big, it's, he's just, you're not going to be able to control him. And that's your own fault. And um, I just, I'm fine. I get very distressed by Mike. I don't like this little bratty boy that is in my life. And I'm, I don't know whether they're playing it of him being a brat and Pat being a bad parent, or whether it's meant to be funny that Mike is like this. It's not funny. Um, so yeah, I don't enjoy Mike. I was kind of thinking, oh, it could be nice to see a relationship develop between Courtney and her little brother now. But no, the brother can just go to boarding school for all I care. Um, also this episode, we have the mystery of, I've forgotten her name, but the magician and Joey's mum, the magician's wife, Joey's mum, um, something has happened to her because she was leaving and she warned him about the town and now her car is a wreck and her cat is running around loose in the junkyard. So did she do that to try and fake her disappearance so that the Injustice Society didn't come after her? Did they come after her because they wanted to, you know, clean sleep anyone that might know anything? We've got rid of that family now. Is she being experimented on by weird snake man? Doctor, snake man? Um, there's a lot of unsolved things here. Now, Pat has a lead to follow in the same way that the kids have a lead to follow because they saw their principal playing violin music to Brainwave. So they can now try and figure out if any of the justice, Injustice Society used violins and musical instruments or if maybe she fits the profile of any of them. So I think it's good that there is different strands of information. I think it's good that this episode, Pat wasn't aware of what Courtney was up to. Maybe he should be paying more attention to what Courtney's up to given that he knows that she's running around being Stargirl. But... Um, I think I enjoy the fact that Courtney is very much a kid like she's not acting like an adult getting superpowers or someone that is you know she's a bit impulsive she's a bit reckless she her heart is entirely in the right place she's doing it because she truly wants to do good and she enjoys it a lot but you know she re she reached out to Yolanda but the way she's acting is a very impulsive and you know it's just such a kid way to act and I think they're doing that really well um, it's just Pat that I'm a bit anxious about as a viewer but yeah i really really enjoyed this episode um if you would like to watch the unedited version of this reaction please check it out on patreon um as always and yes thank you for watching